are a Sri Lankan bank. This is our home. That's why we are committed to its the future of this country. Funding national development initiatives. Because we believe in banking beyond transactions. HNB, your partner in progress. Welcome to LMD TV. I'm Andrea Melissa. This week, Anushan Selvaraja speaks with Manjula De Silva, the Secretary General and CEO of Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, to find out the Chamber's perspective of the economic trials ahead and the steps it has taken in this regard. Welcome, Manjula. Good to have you on the show. Uh, thank you. Yeah, good to be here. Now, uh, tell us, how does the Chamber view uh, the impact of this pandemic on our economy? Yeah, actually, this uh, crisis is going to have a very significant uh, impact on the economy. Uh, just like uh, everywhere else in the world uh, and uh, uh, in particular in Sri Lanka uh, we believe that uh, uh, due to the fact that we have been just coming out of uh, the aftermath of the Easter crisis uh, the impact will be felt even more uh, and in particular on certain sectors uh, like uh, tourism and the apparel industry um, you find that the hotels are basically shut down and then the apparel sector is working at something like 25% uh, of its uh, capacity. Uh, so we are going to see maybe a couple of quarters of uh, negative growth or very low growth. Uh, but at the same time, we are hoping that uh, we'll be able to recover uh, maybe within about six to eight months, hopefully. Uh, we call it a U-shaped recovery. Uh, which is which is where you kind of uh, regain your growth rate, but uh, not really come back to the same growth path. Angela, the chamber did write to the government a few weeks back, uh, outlining some sort of proposals to mitigate the, the, the impact of the pandemic on our, our economy. Uh, could you just outline what those uh, uh, proposals were? Uh, yes, actually, we made a submission about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, to the president and uh, this was uh, titled the uh, economic uh, uh, recovery post covid uh, through a shared vision uh, so what we meant by a shared vision is that we feel in this particular moment of crisis uh, the private sector and the public sector must come together uh, and uh, try to uh, chart a recovery uh, from this situation that we are in uh, so uh, we made many uh, proposals in that and one of them is that uh, we feel there is a need for a significantly large uh, economic stimulus package uh, and if you put a value on it uh, we were thinking of something like 375 to 450 billion rupees so which is about two and a half to three percent of GDP uh, I mean it's not uh, that big when you look at uh, what other countries have done uh, we, need, we feel there is a need for this kind of a commitment uh, to a stimulus package uh, for a number of uh, purposes. I mean, one is uh, uh, you need to put cash in the hands of uh, the most vulnerable sections in society. Uh, people like daily paid casual workers who have completely lost their uh, livelihood. Uh, then at the same time, you have to support the businesses in the most affected sectors uh, in the economy. Uh, like tourism, apparel, and other areas, uh, to make sure that they have the capacity to keep people in jobs. Uh, because right now, there is a danger uh, of uh, people uh, losing their jobs unless the companies have some kind of support, uh, at least to meet the wage uh, cost. Uh, so, these are some of the key uh, priorities for which we felt we need some kind of a stimulus package. And, and also, uh, there are some sectors to which the government uh, owes a lot of money. There's a lot of uh, outstanding bills uh, to construction sector, uh, pharmaceutical sector, and so on. So in those cases, what we are requesting the government to do is to just uh, pay the uh, use uh, that have been outstanding for some time. But in order to provide that stimulus package, where are we going to find the funds from? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that question. Uh, actually, yes, we, we fully understand. We fully understand the position the government is in. We know they don't have uh, access, ready access to a pool of funds uh, to, to allocate uh, 
that, but there are ways of facing the required and uh, and one of which is to engage with the multilateral agencies like IMF, World Bank, ADB, and so on. Uh, because I mean, these institutions are there uh, for countries to seek help in moments of crisis like this. I mean, if you don't go to them now, I don't think uh, there had ever been a time where their uh, support has been needed more than what we are facing today. Uh, so that is, I mean, just like the businesses going to the bank, I mean, these are international banks and funds uh, who are there and, and we can get their support. And also we should engage with the uh, other multilateral and bilateral uh, lenders and see whether we can, you know, push back some of the debt repayments, uh, get into some kind of debt moratorium. Uh, we can work out uh, currency swap lines. Uh, there are things that can be done. Uh, to, to raise funds and also we can reallocate uh, funds from say areas like the public investment program because in this current situation we have to work out our priorities so rather than put money into infrastructure at the moment what we really need is to keep people in jobs. Let's just bring it back to the proposals Manjula, uh, how, how were they received? Uh, were there, was there any implementation? Uh, it's just about two weeks since we submitted uh, the proposals uh, and then we, we feel that the certainly it may be receiving the highest uh, level of consideration. Uh, we are happy to note that actually one of our recommendations was to set up a uh, economic recovery task force and, and that has been done. Uh, we greatly welcome that. And uh, also we have heard, uh, we have come to know, uh, that uh, they are also in negotiation with the IMA. Uh, to get some uh, kind of facility. Uh, so if that works and if you, they can also pursue some of the other options uh, that are available for uh, funding, we are, we are hoping that very soon we can look forward to the announcement of a, a significant stimulus package and we are really, really hoping uh, that will come very soon. Apart from those proposals, Manjula, what else has the Chamber been up to? Uh, yes, uh, now having uh, submitted that uh, broad sort of macro level submission, we are currently looking more specifically into the different sectors of the economy, uh, like uh, tourism, apparel, food and beverages, uh, capital markets, and so on. And with the help of the network of different committees and associations that are uh, linked to the chamber, uh, we are tapping their inputs and we are trying to develop a very comprehensive uh, sector based proposal. And some of these we have already released as well as and when some of these have been completed. For example, on the transport sector, we released some proposals uh, which was out in the media as well. And we have just completed another set of uh, submissions on international trade related logistics. Uh, so another very, very important area, uh, so which will be released soon uh, to the uh, public. Uh, in addition to that, we, we are also doing a lot of work in the area of uh, public education uh, for the benefit of the members as well as uh, the general public. Uh, we have been running a series of uh, programs uh, focusing on a range of topics from working from home to how to prepare uh, to get back to work when the curfew is finally lifted, what kind of you know, safe practices that you need to adopt. Uh, to the accounting and tax implications of the uh, COVID crisis. Uh, and uh, so lots of different uh, kinds of uh, uh, programs in the form of webinars, of course. We're going for a short commercial break, uh, Manjula. We'll be back after a short word from our sponsors. Stay tuned. a Sri Lankan bank. This is our home. That's why we are committed towards the future of this country, funding national development initiatives, because we believe in banking beyond transactions. HNB, your partner in progress. Welcome back. We'll now continue our discussion with the Secretary General and CEO of Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Manjula De Silva. Okay, so you said we do need a, this uh, stimulus package, but Manjula, what if it does not come through? What would that? What would the consequences be uh, if we don't safeguard our jobs? Yes, I mean that, that's that's the area of concern. Uh, I, I strongly believe the large companies will still try their best to avoid the retrenchment, and, and we have had 
some positive signals coming from areas like the apparel sector who are really trying their best to avoid layoffs and I, I, I hope the others will do likewise uh, but uh, and there will be uh, so smaller enterprises the medium scale enterprises and also the self-employed persons I mean, there's a very large group of self-employed persons uh, people who work in the informal sector uh, I mean a lot of them will probably lose their livelihood and, and, and that's where really you know unemployment can come from and then also there can be a lot of uh, returnees from overseas uh, once the airport is open uh, you may have an influx of people who may have uh, lost their jobs overseas and then will come back so that can have a lot of socioeconomic consequences uh, on, on, on one side on the social side uh, you know you can have a lot of people uh, idle it can lead to alcohol abuse drugs crime a uh, whole lot of you know uh, underworld activities and so on and, and also on the economic side it puts a lot of burden on the government uh, because you have more mouths to feed and, and with no contribution coming back uh, from them so this is where back again the public sector and the private sector have to work together I mean, you can't just expect the government to do this uh, and, and, and try to see who are the most affected people and then try to reskill and deploy them. But is Sri Lanka geared to switch tracks like that? I mean, our business sector does not seem to be too interested in R&D and coming up with new uh, innovative products. I, 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 I agree, but, uh, but sometimes it is when you're faced with a crisis that really triggers innovation, that triggers new thinking. I mean, for example, now if you take working from home, for a whole lot of time people have been talking about the possibility of getting at least the professionals to work from home. We've been talking about female engagement and getting more of the uh, uh, female workforce, uh, even in professional areas, to work from home. It never happened. Uh, no one was really interested. But now, what has happened over the last one month is that uh, so many people have suddenly discovered that you can actually stay at home and make a uh, very good contribution. Uh, so likewise, I think uh, the, the, this current crisis, uh, in fact, uh, somebody has nicely put it this way, saying it's, it's not uh, the, my IT manager uh, nor any IT consultant who actually made the greatest digital transformation in my company, it's COVID-19. Uh, so, so likewise, I mean, when people are really pushed to the corner, uh, I think uh, a lot of people will start uh, beginning to look at uh, new ways of coming out of this crisis I and mean, how best actually it's a, it's a case of survival now it's, it's not a case of growth it's a case of survival and then some organizations unless they adapt uh, to the uh, new new environment I mean you will find some of them uh, going uh, out of business completely. Manjula moving on uh, what is your assessment of the government's uh, Saubhagya program? I think it's a it's a good program uh, initially there was a bit of uh, lack of clarity the start, you know, whether it's an interest subsidy only or whether it's a refinancing scheme and so on. But now it has been clarified. Uh, so it's going to be more like a refinancing facility where the central bank is going to uh, fund the banks at a lower interest rate and then the banks are going to online uh, the funds that they are going to get from the central bank. Uh, but the problem now, uh, what remains, is the adequacy of the quantum of funds. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, 50 billion is certainly not adequate even to go around all the micro, small and medium enterprises who may be needing uh, emergency short-term funding. Uh, so let alone the larger uh, companies, uh, even from the uh, most affected sectors like tourism, uh, there's a big doubt whether they will be able to uh, get any benefit because now the banks have been told to prioritize. Uh, starting with the, uh, the the small and medium micro small and medium enterprises and then only go to the next level and then so there are question marks whether uh, this amount of funds will be adequate so as you said it's going to be a tough few months going forward now as the chamber uh, what sort of advice would you give out to the players in our economy yes certainly i mean what what we would like to tell them is that uh, not to over depend on the government and the banks yes they have to support you 
and we all hope that they will try to do more uh, to support the private sector. Uh, but at the same time, the businesses need to really look uh, inwards and then see what can they do internally uh, to help uh, cope with this crisis. So there are many things uh, that one can do. Uh, like, you know, for a, for a start, uh, you know, you have to make sure that uh, you avoid uh, all unnecessary expenses. I mean, you have to completely eliminate or postpone whatever expenses that you cannot really justify uh, in this environment. And then you have to start looking at new sources of supplies. I mean, if the earliest supplies are not available, look at new sources. Look at new sources of funding, uh, you know, again, without only depending on the banks, see whether there are ways of raising some equity funds or use some other instrument to raise uh, capital. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also feel that uh, the, the companies uh, need to focus on cash. Now, normally we always tell our accountants, uh, don't look at cash, focus on profit. But in, in, in situation of uh, crisis, it's completely different. Actually, profit becomes irrelevant. I mean, no point having a profit in your books if you don't have cash uh, to pay for your uh, uh, raw material or pay wages. So you have to very, very closely monitor uh, your cash flow. You have to see, uh, you have to project your cash, how much of cash you're going to get month by month, how much of cash uh, needs to be spent. And you have to also try and see whether how you can negotiate with your suppliers to get uh, better settlement terms. So these are some other things that one can do in the short term. And also look at the business model, as I earlier said. I mean, if the business model needs to change uh, to suit the current environment, we may have to look at that. But in the long term, uh, we may have to take also even tougher decisions, uh, such as maybe we may have to sometimes exit a particular line of business. And if that line of business is not going to be relevant in the post-COVID world, the new normal, as people call it, uh, I mean, then you may have to be ready to get out of it. You may have to sometimes consider selling off certain assets you would have probably held for a very long time if they are not going to be of any use. Uh, and sometimes maybe engage in some form of restructure of your uh, businesses and companies. So some tough decisions will have to be made and the chamber will be always there uh, to support our members uh, to go through that kind of process. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope everything works out for the best. Thank you very much for joining us, Manjula. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Anshan. It was a pleasure. That's all we have for you. Join us again next week at the same time on www.lmd.lk and our Facebook page. Thanks for watching and stay safe. We are a Sri Lankan bank. This is our home. That's why we are committed to it's the future of this country. Funding national development initiatives because we believe in banking beyond transactions. HNB, your partner in progress.